Function 5.2 is one-to-one -one in inverse functions. An inverse function switches the domain and range of the original function. So if the ordered pair AB exists in the original function, then its inverse BA exists in the inverse function. A one-to-one -one function is a function that has unique x-coordinates. So a regular function, every x has a unique y-coordinate. Now, on a one-to-one -one function, every y also has a unique x-coordinate. For functions, we have the vertical line test, which says if you draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, it can only cross the graph at one point because each x can only show up once. Well, now for one-to-one -one functions, we also have what's called the horizontal line test. So if you draw a horizontal line, each y-coordinate can only exist once, so it should only touch the graph in one place. This first graph here fails the vertical line test, so it's not a function at all. And these second two graphs both pass the vertical line test. So they're both functions. But this parabola, if I test the horizontal line test, one y-coordinate, or actually multiple y-coordinates, show up more than once. So this is not a one-to-one -one function because it fails the, the horizontal line test. A function, but not a one-to-one -one function. Versus this exponential function, if I draw a horizontal line, it only ever crosses a graph in one place. So not only is it a function, it's also a one-to-one -one function. So here's a function, it's just a list of coordinate pairs, and the first question is, is it a one-to-one -one function? So does each y-coordinate only show up once? And then I want you to find the inverse. So remember, in inverse, you just switch the domain and range, so all the x's become y's, all the y's become x's. So what we notice is this y-coordinate of 4 and this y-coordinate of 1 show up multiple times. So it's not a 1 to 1 function. This is its inverse. I just switched every pair. I switched the x and y-coordinate. And now I want you to look at this inverse of f and decide whether or not this inverse is a function itself. What you should notice is for the same reason that f was not 1 to 1, f inverse is not a function. These same issues that cause this not to be 1 to 1 are the same issues that are causing this not to be a function. So there's the, some relationship between that. Now what I want you to do is I want you to sketch a graph of y equals x squared and y equals x cubed and decide whether they're 1 to 1. And while you're thinking about that, try and figure out whether its inverse would be a function. So the parabola, like we talked about on the previous slide, it does not pass the horizontal line test. So you have repeated y's, so it is not 1 to 1, versus y equals x cubed does not have any repeated y's, so it is 1 to 1. Here are some notes on 1 to 1 functions and their inverses, so go ahead and pause the video and take down these notes. So as we kind of saw before, for a function to have an inverse that is also a function, the original function has to be one to one. So every function can have an inverse, its inverse just may not be a function itself. The way we note an inverse function is with this f negative one. It does not mean f to the negative one power, it does not mean take the reciprocal, it's just the notation for inverse functions. The domain of the original function is the range of the inverse. The range of the original function is the domain of the inverse because they just switch each other. And then this is a key part here. If you take the composite of a function and its inverse, either direction, then you'll always get x. So that's how we test to see if two functions are inverses of each other. The last part is if you have a graph of a function and its inverse, and they're actually symmetrical about the line y equals x. So we're given two functions, f of x and f inverse of x, and we want to decide whether or not they're actually inverses of each other. So in order to do that, we have to test f composed with f inverse and f inverse composed of f and see if you both get x. You have to test both. Just because one is x does not necessarily mean the other one is also going to be x. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. We just in last section 5.1 worked on composites. So I want you to compose f composed with f inverse of x and simplify completely. So when you did the composition, every time you saw an x in f of x, you replaced it with f inverse. So 2 times the quantity x plus 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 divided by x plus 1 over x minus 2 minus 1. You need a common denominator and then simplify everything. The denominators go away. You end up with 3x divided by 3, which is in fact x. So now go ahead and pause the video and go the other direction. Just because we got an x here does not mean we can stop. We have to actually do f inverse composed with f. 
So same thing, every time I saw an x in f inverse, I replaced it with the entire function 2x plus 1 over x minus 1, made some common denominators, simplified, and it does in fact simplify down to x. Now you can say, yes, they are in fact inverses of each other. So now what we want to do is we want to find the domain and range of each. The way we do this is we actually just find the domain of each, and then because the way inverses work, their ranges are just the opposite domains. So if we look at domain of f, we want to find the domain of the original function f. It's a rational function, which means you can't have a zero in the denominator. So you end up with x such that x cannot equal positive 1. Since this is the domain of f, it becomes the range of f inverse. Make sure you switch to y's because we're talking about range, but the range of f inverse now is y cannot equal 1 because if there's no x equals 1 in the original function, when you switch domain and range, there's going to be no y equals 1. So now I want you to find the, pause the video and find the domain of f inverse and the range of f. Again, it's a rational function, so you end up with x cannot equal 2. That becomes the range of the original function, so your range is y cannot equal 2. So find the domains and then just switch them for the ranges. Here are the steps for finding an inverse function if you're given a one-to-one -one function. Go ahead and pause the video and write these down, and then we'll try one on the next slide. So here we're given a one-to-one -one function, f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 over x plus 4, and we want to find its inverse. So our first step to finding its inverse, remember inverses, domains, and range switch. So we replace every x with a y and every y or f of x with an x. So we end up with x is equal to 2y minus 3 over y plus 4. Now we want to get y equals just like any normal function, so I want you to pause the video and try and solve for y. So my first step was to clear out the denominator, so I multiplied both sides by y plus 4 to clear this denominator out. Make sure you distribute on this left side. So now you have xy plus 4x is equal to 2y minus 3. So if you haven't already finished, go ahead and pause the video and keep working. So now I want to solve for y, so I moved everything with a y to one side, everything without a y to the other side. Now this is the part a lot of students stick on. They get to here and then they're not sure what to do. So you want to get y times something is equal to whatever's over here so that you can divide it across. So I factored out the y, so you get y times x minus 2 is equal to negative 4x minus 3. You have y times basically a number. You can now divide by that. So you get y is equal to negative 4x minus 3 over x minus 2. And then your last step, always, always, always make sure you change your y into an f inverse of x because we have to label it properly. So now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and find the domain and range of both of these. So they're both rational functions f of x. Domain is x cannot equal negative 4, which means that's the range of f inverse f inverse x cannot equal 2, which means that's the range of f. So one-to-one -one functions, every x is unique, there's no repeated x's. It has to be one-to-one -to, -one to have an inverse that's also a function. For inverses, you just switch the x and y coordinates, and you can test to see if two functions are inverses by taking the composite both directions and see if it equals x.